get things underway with the original dance, the second of three phases of the competition for the ice dancers. And right now, a look at the standings. Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev, the two-time and reigning champions, in the lead over Beata Handra and Charles Sinek, Jessica Joseph, and Brandon Forsythe, rounding out the top three. As always, in the original dance, there are five required elements. Perhaps the straight-line footwork, one of the most important, a chance for the top teams to separate themselves from the pack. Representing the Skating Club of Boston, here are Jessica Valentine and Matthew Kosak. And here's the first team to take the ice here in the original dance. They've been together for five seasons. Jessica Valentine and Matthew Kosak. They're in fifth place after the two compulsory dances. Entering into the quick step portion of their combination dance. Little Duke Ellington, don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Kid. There you go. Jessica's 18 years of age from Green, Maine. And Matthew, 21 years old, goes to the University of Massachusetts. I believe the campus, well, the main campus is in Amherst, but the branch that is right here in Boston. This is a team, as you mentioned, from the Skating Club of Boston. Right here in town. So the side-by-side -side footwork needs to start to go from end to end. Look for unison. Speed and difficulty in the turn. A little bobble there. Side-by-side -side footwork really shows the capability of the individual, how sure-footed they are. Well done. This is a really a, a nice step up for them. They are junior competitors. This is their first time in senior, and that's a big step. If not one of the overall favorites, certainly one of the local favorites exactly. right here. The crowd definitely enjoying the performance here in the original dance of Jessica Valentine and Matthew Kosick. Here in the straight line footwork, they didn't quite start at the end of the ice. It must move from one end of the ice to the other. They have a fairly nice unison in the beginning. Here, bracket steps, which are quite difficult. They just start to lose their timing and unison toward the end, and they really need to keep that close together to be competitive with the top teams here. There's a look at the panel of nine judges. More than anything here in the original dance, they're looking for mistakes. What about the deductions, Susie? Well, here they are. For a stumble or a brief interruption, it's a one-tenth deduction. A fall of one partner is a two-tenth deduction. A fall of both partners, a three-tenth deduction. And if the lady is lifted too high above the man's head, a one-tenth deduction. Now, there'll be two sets of marks here in the original dance. The first for composition, the second for presentation. Here's the first set in the 4.5 to 4.8 range. Well, I think these marks are fair. They're, they're middle of the line, but they have a lot of work to do in their difficulty. And now the second set for presentation, 4.6 up to a 5.0, Susie. Well, they're very smooth, and, and for the first time out in seniors, I think they did a great job. 
So the original dance underway. Valentine and Kosick get things started here at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Champion. Back inside the Fleet Center in Boston, the original dance continues here at the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. One of the reasons this particular national championship is so special, the history here. The Skating Club of Boston opened its doors in 1912. It was a driving force in skating early on, and one of the great names it helped produce, one Dick Button, who would go on to win seven U.S. gold medals and two Olympic gold medals as well. What a great career Dick has had, and unfortunately, we've got to report to you that our friend and colleague, Dick Button, will not be behind the microphone at a national championship for the first time since 1961. That was a long run. Dick had a fall a couple of weeks ago and hit his head. We are happy to report, though, that he is on the mend and recovering. And, Dick, our best to you. Get back out here very quickly. We miss you, okay? Susie Wynn joins me once again. And, Susie, Naomi Lang, Peter Chernyshev, the two-time and reigning U.S. champions, they're back. But from last year's national championships in Cleveland, the silver medalists, the bronze medalists, they're not here in Boston, so it is wide open. It really is. Lang and Chernichev right now are clearly and solidly in the lead, and they're such quality champions. But the real excitement in this event is that only two teams go on to the world championships, and right now there are three couples gunning for that position. Have a look out for Tanith Belbin and Benjamin Augusto. They have extraordinary ability. They are last year's junior champs. And then there's the new team of Jessica Joseph and Brandon Forsythe. They have also great potential and speed. And then, there's, of course, there's the experience of Vieta Handra and Charles Sinek. Now, all of these teams are very well matched and very evenly matched, so they'll have to bring their best performance here in this original dance if they're going to win a berth on the world team. So where they land, no one knows, and that's what makes this event in dance very exciting. Tennis Belbin and Benjamin Augusto. And taking the ice right now, one of the teams Susie just mentioned. Great future ahead of them. Tanith Belbin, Benjamin Augusto, not only the junior national champions, but they're the junior world bronze medalist, and they recently won the junior Grand Prix championship. because of their speed and how well they work with one another. Their partnering is fabulous. The world has known This is the love I give to you Alone Very pretty and well-centered dance spin. I try to say from Montreal. She is trying to get her green card, and by the way, even once she does that, it'll be another five years, I believe, before she becomes a citizen. So forget about the next Olympic Games. Benjamin Augusto celebrated his 19th birthday on Monday, right here in Boston. Great, but what these two have such strong fundamentals. That's what makes them very secure and over their feet. One of the young teams trying to fill the void left by last year's silver medalist and the team that everybody thought had the best future, Jamie Silverstein, Justin Pekarek. They are no longer together. Justin may give up the sport entirely. And Debbie Kegel, Oleg Fedyukov, who are bronze medalist, did come here. They started to skate at the end of the first compulsory dance. Oleg actually fell, re-injured a quad muscle near his kneecap, and they were forced to withdraw from the competition. It's really been a year of surprises in the dance world. Great unison in this twizzle sequence. You can really see the difficulty. And yet they're able to maintain their speed. Girls, girls, girls. Girls, 
two are very musical and delightful to watch. They're in for the long haul. They're very devoted to the sport. You can really see that in their performance here. Well, I know you know him well, too. You <laughs> used to be his coach, right? I used to be, and he was a delight to teach, that's for sure. What a great foundation from Coach Susie Wynn. Tanit Belvin and Benjamin Augusto, the junior national champions now on the senior level. Now this rotational lift is extraordinary because a couple things have to happen. She needs to have a strong core, great flexibility. He has to have just the right momentum to be able to spin the lift and the balance between them. And to come out of this as smoothly as they, they did, boy, that, that's really special. Five Let's see what the marks five are now for three. composition 5.0 five 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 up one. to 5.5. Five five well, I think they should be really pleased with some of these marks. The 5.4s and 5.5s, five five those are quite nice. Five, oh, a little low. Five Igor Spielbahn, Liz Coach, their coaches, five they train six. in Detroit. Five now, six. presentation, 5.1 five five up to 5.6. Five so for as young as they are, they really four. have some great five scores. Five they really are quite mature. A lot of energy, too. Tanith Melbourne, Benjamin Augusto, they're effort here in the original dance. Well, Susie recently filed the original dance. Continues here in Boston. Terry Gannon, along with Susie Wynn. Here are Kimberly Navarro and Robert Schmallow. They're in sixth place after the compulsory dances. We're opening up with a foxtrot and then transitioning into a Charleston. In that's the way to live. Moving up to the senior ranks for the first time this season. They placed 10th at the Junior National Championships last year. them is they look very much like they're enjoying their performance and that means a lot they need to get a little more difficulty into that dance but well done not a bad debut though their first trip to the senior national championships Kimberly Navarro and Robert Smalla now here in the diagonal footwork it must move from corner to corner see watch their hips they could get a little closer and that would make a better picture and if they broaden their hold a little bit they'd have a better line through their back. But still, watch their faces. Nice enthusiasm and good expression. 
Four Only two and a half minutes four long, maybe, but two, every skater four four comes four off the ice four out of breath. Four four <laughs> four for four some four air. Three. Composition four marks, 4-1 four four to 4-7. Four so what was missing in this dance was the difficulty in the flow. And their marks for the elements are there, they just need to broaden the difficulty, four really. 4.0. Presentation four marks now, though. Four Low mark, 4.0, up to 5.1, Susie. I'm a little surprised by that, because I do feel that they use their music well, and they express the feeling of the dance very well as of Jessica Joseph and Brendan Forsyth. Back at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships, the original dance underway. Kenneth Melbin, Benjamin Augusto in the lead so far, but here's a team in third after the compulsory dances. Jessica Joseph and Brandon Forsyth, and he is a local guy. Born in Concord, grew up in Lexington. And I think here in the original dance, their personalities will really come through. They've only been together since July, and that is so hard. I've done that, coming back with a new partner. There's so much to learn about how each other moves, and they really are on the right track. They both have plenty of experience, but just not together. Brandon with his partner last year, 2000 World Junior Silver Medalist and Junior National Silver Medalist, and Jessica along with Charles Butler, the 98 World Junior Champion. They just need a little more time to gain the confidence and that feel with one another. Been competing against each other and have been friends for some 10 years now, but together since August. That's not a long time. Jessica Joseph and Brandon Forsythe. Now here in their straight line footwork, right here, see how close they get suddenly? And then as the footwork continues, they start to break apart. And that's what the judges are really looking for. You really want to see one form out there and that's hard. That's really hard to do. Keep that unison. And there, the unison's off. That's going to separate again. That's a separating factor for the judges. It's so easy to identify. That's a great point you make, because that's so hard to pick up, too. The intricacies of ice dancing sometimes are so small. I think it's hard, but once you know what to look for, anybody can spot them. It's your coach, Alexander Julin, the 93 world champion now. 5.0 to 5.3 for composition. They have some wonderful choreography. Again, it's just the speed that's lacking and a little gappy. They're not skating as close together, and that's simply because they're new together. And presentation marks in the 5.2 to 5.4 range. So Jessica Joseph, Brandon Forsythe into second place overall so far. When we come back, taking the ice now here in the original dance. 
Beata Handra and Charles Sinek in second place after the compulsory dances. They won Pacific Coast sectionals a year ago. This year competed in the Grand Prix. We saw them play sixth and seventh in their two events, trying to win a medal here in Boston. They really had a strong compulsory round. That's really where their strengths are. The music Happy Feet by Paolo Conte. Fourth at the national championships last year, but remember Silverstein and Pekarik, where the silver medalists are not here, Kegel and Fedyakov are not here. It's a great opportunity. It really is. I think they're ready for it. They have very nice foot placement and a very intricate beginning. That was really well skated. I just love her expression. She has a sense of warmth about her. And they really work so well together. Nice job. They train in Muncie, New York, but Charles is a local product, too. Lexington, Massachusetts. That's where he's from. Yadahandra and Charles Sinek. Now here in their dance lift, she has a beautiful straight back. He has very secure feet. But what's hard about lifts are the transitions. Here he's got to change to her other leg and release her. And that sometimes the transitions aren't as smooth. But the beginning of that lift was quite nice. And here are the judges' marks for Vieta Hendra and Charles Sinek for composition. 5.3, 5 5.4. They were married back in 1996, but on the scene some, for some time. Yana's 24 years old, Charles 32. And now the march for composition, 5.1 to 5.5. And their marks Well, I think the 5.1 is a little bit low, but they do, again, need to move out a little bit more. It was well skated, however. Second set, 5.2 up to 5.6. And those are good enough to put Handra and Sinek into first place overall. Well, we use Handra and Sinek in first place, Tanith Belbin, Benjamin Augusto in second, ahead of Joseph and Forsythe. But taking the ice right now, the two-time and reigning U.S. champions, the overwhelming favorites to win here in Boston, Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev. Their first piece of music is called Fly Me to the Moon. It's certainly a smooth and silky approach to the Foxtrot. waste no time to get right into their straight line footwork here. Uh, this man here is going to take me by the hand and he's going to lead me down the right path to righteousness. Nice unison. And all that other mother jazz. And In a local right turn. Temple. Fly me to the moon. Let me Swing among those stars. How can you not tap your feet to this song, <laughs> huh? Let me see what the spring is like on 
Touch your butter and mark. Look how close they're skating together in on the words. ballroom turn. Oh, my. In other words, baby. Their lifts are so effortless that if you saw a team try them that had less ability, then you would realize how good they are at lifting. Not to slight her at all, but there are folks around the skating world who talk about Peter Chanishev as perhaps the best male skater in ice dancing out there. He really is. He has great control. He used to be a free skater, but he also has a great feel for dancing. I've, I've danced with him. You just know exactly where you need to be. He's great at leading you into position. Hydroblading move. A nice highlight there. You. Well, the quick step, this is, a, I would say, a departure rhythm for them. They're normally skating to things that are long lined and smooth. So this is challenging for them, but they, they do very well with it. These two are outstanding. They're great national champions, and they, they really involve the audience in this original dance. Naomi Lang, 22 years of age, originally from Michigan, and Peter Chernyshev from St. Petersburg, Russia. Can't wait to get his citizenship on January 29th back at home in Detroit. Lang and Chernyshev will have their scores when we come back to Boston. Alexander Sasha Zulin, their new coach, congratulating Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev, the two-time and reigning U.S. gold medalist after a terrific performance here in the original dance. And they waste no time. They get right into their straight-line footwork. They've got great control, wonderful quick feet. You can just watch their bodies are strong, their feet are secure. And here, those turns are so hard to keep in unison, and they do it. That's exceptional. And one thing they're so wonderful at is highlight moves. This is a hydroblading move. Look how he is using no arms there. That's just simple, great edge control, and she has a lovely arch in her back. Position. Well, they received a perfect 6.0, the first of their careers last year at the Nationals. That was in the free dance. Let's see what they get here. Composition, 5.5 to 5.8. Well, there's a lot of agreement. I, I feel the 5.8 is more in the range of the mark that I would have given them. Presentation marks forthcoming. Here they are, 5.7 up to 5.9, just that close to a 6.0. But a great way to start this 2001 State Farm U.S. Championships. Naomi Lang, Peter Chanishev into the lead. And certainly the she favorite is the Washington to win the gold medal. Washington Remember the two Virginia. spots on the world team still open. Arizona in Tempe, Arizona. Please welcome now Caitlin Obrensky and Jonathan McGowan. So it's Lang and Chernyshev over Handra and Sinek. Belbin and Augusto in third. And this is the final team to take the ice. Caitlin Obrensky and Jonathan McGowan. It's always hard to speed after the leader. So you have to really keep your focus and concentration and do what you know you can. Getting a chance to see every one of the Ice Dance teams here in the competition. That's kind of rare, but the attrition rate has been extremely high with injuries. And it, but we have talked, Susie, in the last couple of years about the fact that with the youngsters coming up, ice dancing in the United States is certainly on the rise. It really is, and now there are more opportunities at the younger level, at the novice and junior level. So people are sticking it out in those levels and not rushing to get into seniors. Can't I free yourself for mine and melt your cold old heart? Well, but their upper body 
position. They're not connected very well. You can see here an arm-to-arm -arm position. These are considered less difficult. They're a little far away, I always say when I'm teaching Gappy. And that makes it easier. Is that the technical term for it? It's my technical term. <laughs> But when you're that far apart, it's hard to get speed because your forces are not working together. Caitlin Abremsky is from Clifton, Virginia. Jonathan McGalmick from Phoenix, Arizona, but they live and train in Laurel, Maryland. He attends the University of Maryland, and actually, Caitlin is a senior in high school, and that's where she wants to go to college. Skating to the Charleston, dance of the 20s, considered the flapper dance. Characteristic of fast footwork and lots of fun. performed this well. It's just hard to ski right after the champ, but they held it together, they kept their focus, and that's good. Kept their poise, but a tough act to follow. We'll come back and check the marks for Abramski and McGalnick and have a word with the leaders, Lang and Chernyshev, in a moment. 4.0, 3 3 Welcome back to Boston as Caitlin Obremski and Jonathan McGalnick sit alongside Genrik Stratinsky, their coach, and a fourth place finisher at the 88 Olympics. First set, 3.7 to 4.5. Some of these marks are disappointingly low for them. They really need to step up the quality of their skating and the difficulty. 3.7, not what they want to see for presentation. 3.8, so not much higher, up to 4.6. But it's the two-time and reigning champions, Lang and Chernyshev, in the lead right now after the original dance, ahead of Handra and Sinek, who are in a good spot for the silver, as well as the second place on the world championship team. Belbin and Augusto round out the top three. The leaders have been joined by Peter Carruthers right now. Peter? Okay, Terry, well, Naomi, three five-point-nines. What does that mean to your ice dancing? Uh, well, in OD, that's just so special to us. We've never gotten five nines in ODs before, so uh, it's very, very exciting. <laughs> now, uh, the coaching change, talk about that. How has that impacted you in such a positive way? Uh, it was such a great help, uh, I mean, in every way, basically. I think that uh, emotionally and physically we're in much better shape and we're getting so much more support from Alexander. Everything's great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, good luck going into the free dance. Congrats. Thank you. Terry, back to you. All right, Peter, thank you, Chips. The pair is getting set now for their short program. Terry Gannon, back with you. We are only just beginning from Boston. Remember, we're with you throughout the week and the weekend. Friday evening at 7 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN. You've got the men with Todd Eldridge and Timothy Gable and Michael Weiss. Then at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2, Michelle Kwan and the ladies, their short programs. And over on ABC Sports, Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening, we've got the championship free skates. Right now, as the pairs get set to go, we welcome in one of New England's own, Peter Carruthers, the Olympic silver medalist. Peter, you look at this field here for the pairs, the 99 U.S. champions, Danielle and Steve Hartzell, one of the favorites. They were out last year because of an injury. Danielle fractured her knee. They missed this event. A rocky start now already here in Boston. Yeah, unfortunately, the bad luck has continued for the Hartzells here at the U.S. Skating Championships in Boston. The bad luck started with a very bad fall on a lift. Danielle falling eight feet out of the air on top of Steven's head. Off to the hospital he went 14 stitches later and a doctor's release saying yes you can skate. He wanted to skate, she wanted to skate. There they are in practice earlier today. Now they're backstage warming up. They're ready to compete believe it or not. Down but not out. Pair skating, a very dangerous sport. We're reminded of that all the time. He had a CAT scan, by the way. He did not have a concussion, no further damage, so he is set to go. I'm thrilled to welcome in right now the five-time U.S. champion, Peggy Fleming. And we were just talking about this before we went on. The 20th year now, behind the microphone. How did that happen I so quickly? I don't know. I don't know how that happened. It just happened. <laughs> Overnight, as a matter of fact. 
You are one who's always embodied the grace of figure skating. What about the danger, though? You know well about that, too. Well, Terry, you know what strikes me most about all of this is the courage that pair skaters have. Not only do they need the skills of a single skater, but they also need the guts to throw your partner in the air or be thrown. And in addition to the artistry and flow and strength, a pair skater needs bravery. And I think we tend to forget that. But on a happier note, our reigning national champions, Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, are finally breaking through on the world level. They made the podium at Trophy Lalique this fall, and I expect them to defend their title here. It's been a long struggle for Kyoko and John, but they're beginning to look like champions. And that Trophy Lalique competition, a major event earlier this season, and the Grand Prix Series. Well, Peter, as always, there are eight required elements in the pair's short program. And one of the spectacular moves to look for is the split double twist, where the lady has to attain a full split before completing two rotations. Our next competitors represent the University of Delaware Figure Skating Club in Newark, Delaware. Let's have a warm welcome now for Laura Handy and Jonathan Hunt. So here we go, the first pair to take the ice. They have only been together for some six months now. Laura Handy and Jonathan Hunt. And I think their styles are very similar, and I think he is a good match for Laura. And Laura Handy knows all about the danger in this sport. You may remember last year with her former partner, Paul Finnebose, in a frightening crash in practice, Paul fractured his skull. Very nice opening split, double twist. side triple toe loops and she has a hard fall follow up on that story Paul Vinobos nearly died after that fall in practice happy to say that he has recovered he was coaching for a while in Sugarland Texas by all accounts his career over but we hear now that he is starting to practice for what could be a comeback and actually against the advice of some of his coaches his former coaches but we do certainly wish him well Handy has come back very well emotionally from that experience. Now the throw triple sow cow. The timing has to be just right. You don't want to throw your partner too hard. Nice timing there. Judges looking for the unison, making sure that the skaters are spinning together at the same rate of speed. Unfortunate mistake for them that will definitely take points off of the first mark of required elements a fall on the side by side triple toes, but there's potential there. So the pair short program opening up with 20 year old Laura Handy from Atlantic City and 19 year old Jonathan Hunt from Rochester, Michigan. Tough for the judges when you watch pair skating because you have to look at two people performing the jump. Here are the side-by-side -side triple toe loops. He lands his, but you can see she does indeed fall. A three-tenths deduction right there. And again, the timing is very important. They have a nice like throw triple sound cow. Good coverage there across the ice. She wants to strengthen her back a little more on that landing, but well done. 
insists that there be no flash photography for the safety of This is the of backward the outside Thank death spiral. The lady wants to put her left hip up in the air right there and arch the back. That's called the bridge. There's a look at the panel of nine judges who will offer their decisions here tonight. Peter, remember there are eight required elements. What about the deductions they'll be taking? Well, remember in skating, we work off of a perfect mark of 6.0. For example, if a pair falls on a throw jump, they take a three-tenths deduction or a stumble during steps, one to two-tenths. <laughs> their coaches alongside yeah, Tracy Politis on, on the right and Ron Wannington, who coached Peter and his... Sister Kitty, the four zero, U.S. titles, right? Four zero, national championships. Zero, and now the first of two sets of marks for required elements, 4.5 up to 5.1. Well, I think they have a lot of potential. I mean, their body line is very similar, and she got wonderful height on those throw jumps. And their side-by-side side jumps in practice were very good. Mm -hmm. Presentation marks now, wide range here, 4.9 to 5.6. So indeed, these do come up because that does not reflect the mistake on the ball. There are the marks for Laura Handy and Jonathan Hartzell. Translation is that he was doing everything he could to break her fall to reduce the impact. Out last year with the fractured knee that Danielle suffered, Supposed to be a smooth comeback. It has been anything but, but here they go. Skating to the music of Takata and Fugue by Bach. <laughs> side triple toe loops. Here they are. How about that? Good for them. Wow. <laughs> what focus. You can just feel this crowd really pulling for them. They want them to do well and be safe. But lifting's got to be a little bit scary, but they are not holding back. Very nice. Get over the mental recuperation, recovery, call it what you will, of that fall last season. Danielle says she still thinks about it every time she goes up in the air. And as we know, in skating, that mental game is a real tough game. short program. This, the split double twist. And one of the more difficult moves in pair skating. Coming up right here, we'll end with the throw, triple sow cow. She'll rotate three times, hoping to land backwards on one foot. She does. Oh. What a triumph for them. <laughs> and that nice held edge to this in position. A lot of courage in that performance. And this crowd well aware of what they have been through. Not only a figure skating crowd, but here in Boston since that fall, it has gotten a lot of coverage. The injury and the 14 stitches sustained by Steve Hartzell. Doesn't that tell a lot about the character that these two have? How close they are, how much trust they have in one another. Outstanding. And this is where they first tested their courage here tonight with these side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Very difficult. And they just nailed these. They were done so well. And the crowd really got with them at this point. And at the final move in their program, this throw, triple sow cow. Look at the good height she gets. Very much in control in this landing and this nice held edge 
right to this ending position. It was so nice. <laughs> Just a bit out of breath right now, Danielle, Danielle and Steve Hartzell, and Steve Hartzell but these should be very high marks. You can see how excited four, they are already. Five, the first set, 5.4 to 5.6. Well, you know, it, the marks are one thing, six, but what they have five done four, is skated five, very well under adverse conditions. Five. It just shows that they are totally trained and able to focus and under any circumstances. Five you really never five know five how you're going to compete under the pressure five after five coming back off of something six, like that. Presentation marks now 5.2 five to 5.7. I think they did focus on this program and really and gave it a lot of emotion, two. and and the audience really felt that. <laughs> <laughs> terrific, <laughs> terrific way to open up the national championship. Another pair team representing the Detroit Skating Club. Here are Stephanie Kalasovich and Aaron Parcham. The pair short program continues here in Boston. Terry Gannon, Peggy Fleming, and Peter Carruthers rinkside as Stephanie Kalsavich and Aaron Parcham take the ice. Their second season together, their first trip to the Senior National Championships. They are the 2000 U.S. Junior Champions. Gravity of Love, performed by Enigma. Boy, are they building up nice speed going into the split double twist. Great height. Look at the coverage of ice. Wonderful. Now into the throw, triple sow cow. Good oh. height. Wonderful control on that landing. Good speed. Pretty impressive start to their careers together. I mean, they've only been together since May of 99. They won the U.S. Junior title. Again, that lift traveling a long distance on the ice. Very nice. Spin, one change of foot, one change of position. And the pair team has to hit a minimum of eight revolutions while spinning. Stephanie, only 16 years of age, from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Aaron, 23, from Chicago. And now coming up side by side, triple sound cows, which is a more difficult move than the triple toes. Other couples have been doing this. Oh, she, and she had trouble on that landing. Stumbling there, two-footed. But it was a nice, ambitious attempt. But I really do enjoy in other words, the crossovers they have going into the various elements. The foundation of skating is very good. And this is their final move, this outside death spiral. the crowd they people did. can really pick up when they're seeing good skating they had some mistakes but again a very solid foundation of skating within this pair terrific start to the program too they didn't sustain oh, yeah. it maybe for two minutes and 40 seconds but they did get the crowd energized right away stephanie kalsavich and aaron parchum here in the pair's short program take a look at the size of this throw triple sow cow not only does she travel a long way across the distance but she's about three feet in the air there perfect position straight up and down that allows for a perfect landing wonderful but they did get into trouble here these are the side-by-side -side triple sow cows three rotations for each partner he lands his but she puts her foot down and there will be a two-tenths deduction 
4.9, 4 coaches, Mitch Moore on the right, Johnny Johns on the left. Now the first set of marks, they should be pretty high. 4.8 up to 5.3. 5 well, with the mistake that occurred on her triple sow cow, that cannot be ignored. You don't want to open the door with a mistake like that. Presentation marks now 5.1 to 5.5, so those are better. That's a pretty good short program, uh, all said and done. That Stephanie Kalsavich and Aaron Parcham now into third place overall. Meanwhile, Steve Hartzell has now told us it was 12 stitches he received in his head. He and Danielle, his sister, are now with Susie Wynn. Susie? Thanks, Terry. Stephen, yesterday was a very difficult day. You had a hard practice, a tough fall, and 12 stitches. How did you pull this great performance out of the bag? Well, coming in this competition, we knew we were extremely prepared for this competition. We worked harder than I've ever think we've worked before in our lives. And today we drew on that. We've done this program, like, the last couple of weeks, we've been skating clean pretty much every day, and we knew we could do it. It was just a matter of getting on the warm-up and getting my, my feet under me and making sure, and just knowing how I was going to feel out there. And once I knew that, I knew we were fine. Now, going into the free program, did this give you a lot of confidence going into that? Oh, definitely. We wanted to have a good skate tonight, and I think we feel really great about the way we skated, and we're ready for Friday. Well, super. Good luck to you in the free program. Thank you. Terry, back to you. She All right, Susie, so the paired short program continues West. now as, as Tiffany Scott and Philip Dulabon take Park the Park ice. Please welcome Tiffany Scott and Philip Dulabon. They are the reigning U.S. silver medalists, and they went on to the World Championships in Nice, where they had a top ten finish. They placed ninth there. Certainly one of the favorites to challenge for the gold medal here. They're skating to their last year's program, so they're very familiar with this program. And our first element in this short program is a side-by-side -side triple tolu. Oh, and she has a tough ball. They have strong skating, but they really have been hit or miss. Nerves creeping in. repetitive to talk about these injuries, but they are so prevalent in the sport now, and besides the injured knee that Tiffany suffered, Philip Dulabon competing with a fracture in his left wrist. He originally sustained that when he was 17, and really never felt the same. Over the summer, he had the wrist examined, and the verdict was that the bone was broken, never fully healed. He may have off-season surgery on that. Cow. Not quite on with the jumps in terms of singles jumping or within the throws. You know, that's a tough program to perform, a lot of interesting steps, but the timing was not right. It was a little bit rushed, and when that happens, you can run into trouble, especially the kind of trouble she ran into on her jump. Tiffany Scott, a native of New England from Hanson, Massachusetts. A lot of folks here to watch her skate, along with Philip Dulabon from Germantown, Maryland. 
And this was the opening element in the short program, the triple toe loop, in which she gets up there and does not finish that rotation. And you can see she didn't hold on to that uh, landing. And that's going to be a point three deduction. And now this back press lift, which I think is very, very nice, a beautiful position right there. And, and it, it's a real nice transition with all these changes of positions. Very nice extension on her part. Nice smooth layout. The Hartzells, the 99 U.S. champs in the lead so far, but now the scores for Scott and Dulabon, the required elements 5.0 to 5.3. And certainly the first mark for required elements reflecting that deduction. And that's a disappointment for them to have a fall like that. And remember the short program worth one third of the overall score. Presentation marks now 5.4 to 5.7 the range. So Scott and Dulabon in the second place right behind the Hartzells. Spielberg and Craig Joe Wright. Back at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships, the Hartzells in the lead over Scott and Dulabon, then Handy and Hunt in third right now as the current U.S. bronze medalists take the ice. Larissa Spielberg, 20 years old from East Lansing, Michigan, and Craig Joe Wright, 22, from Cleveland. <laughs> Skating to the music by Rodrigo. This pair team has nice energy and they really connect well as a team. All pairs must perform this move, the backward outside death spiral. It's hard to do because the lady must twist her body into an unnatural position to get that look. Coming up are the side-by-side -side double axles. She's been having trouble with them in the practices this week. Here they go for this forward outside takeoff. Oh, yes, and that's what she's been doing. Not as difficult as side-by-side -side triple jumps, so that's always factored into the equation. Remember how important this event is. Not only is it the national championship, but there are two spots open on the world team as well. And only two. Throw, triple loop, right backward outside edge, and there you've got to really stop the rotation and have a smooth, continuous edge on the exit not occur there. Two big mistakes so far. And this is a gorgeous lift. She hit such a beautiful position at the top of that. Looks so easy. together though over the ice the flow and body line is matched so well Larissa coming off a fractured wrist which kept them off the ice from August until mid-October then she injured her foot it took them entirely out of the Grand Prix series so this is their first major competition of the season Larissa Spielberg and Craig Jill Wright now, on this double axle, watch as she gets up into the air, but she really just doesn't get the height, and she'll collapse on the landing. No chance to land that. Three-tenths there. Unfortunate. Golden opportunity perhaps wasted tonight here in Boston by Spielberg and Joe Wright. The first set, ooh, a 3.9 to a 4.6. They, they know it. it. It's just so unfortunate because when you combine all those deductions, 
six tenths. So that really brings the first mark way down. But I love this couple. I see a lot of potential in them, and I think we're going to see more of them in the future. Mm. Presentation marks much better, 4.7 up to 5.4, but that's a disappointing performance for Spielberg and Joe Wright. Looking at 9 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. On the ice right now, Amanda McGarrian and Jared Guzman. Fourth in this event last season. We're skating to Ballet Rhapsody. to the audience and seem to have a really good time doing it as well. And having seen Spielberg and Joe Wright, the U.S. bronze medalist, struggle, they're down at sixth place. Amanda and Jared have to feel like the door is open for them a little bit here. Just off the podium last season. Set down on the double twist. And Jared's mother, Jenny Walsh Guzman, competed with me in 1967. She was the bronze medalist back then. Yeah, who won that year, Peggy? Uh, let me think. Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You get to say that a lot. Don't you? <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> Boy, look at the speed they have on these side-by-side -side spins. That's great. A very fast rate of speed, right together, well, almost right together until the very end. They have nice speed over the ice. They look very sure of themselves. Overhead to a reverse star lift. program. A lot of energy. Yes. They're wonderful. Not huge mistakes. Small minor mistakes. Two Californians who now live and train in Las Vegas out on the ice. Amanda McGarrian and Jared Guzman. Fourth place finishers from last year's national championships in Cleveland. And here is a look at that throw triple sal cow that they did in the program. And watch this back inside edge takeoff as he throws her up in the air. And look at how she is leaning in the air. And it really slows down her rotation. And she can't control the landing. And that'll be a minus two, a two-tenths of a point deduction. The judges' marks for Amanda McGarrian and Jared Guzman for retirement. Peter Gordon, Alabama. Barbara Rolls, their coaches. 4.6. And now the first 4. set, 4.4 4. 4. up to 4.8 4. 8, the range. 4.8, 4. 4.7. 4. Just, just to remind, 4. Uh, the technical or the required 4. elements mark is the first mark. That's where they take the and deduction on the second mark, the presentation. 5.0, 5. Presentation a little less 5. important 5. here in the short program. Absolutely we concentrate true. on the required 5. elements. 4.8 up to 5.3. So McGarrion and Guzman right now into fifth place overall. Keith Stiegler takes the ice. They rounded out the top five at the Nationals last season, but they have had injuries and really so much to deal with on and off the ice to get to this point. Take place, and she really caught 
up with Johnny. There's not much of a size difference between the two, and that has inhibited their ability to do very powerful lifts and throws a fall right off the top. But their extension and flow over the ice, they skate so fast and make everything look so big. But these elements are so crucial. Falling on that deep. By the way, we missed singing happy birthday to Tiffany earlier this week. She just turned 17 this week. But, uh, on a move like that, when there's not a lot of height difference between the two people, it's hard to throw your partner up into the air and get great amplitude. But they do have a very nice line style. to your partner performing the side-by-side -side spins. Listen, though, to what they have been through. Tiffany tore her ACL in July, didn't get back onto the ice until October. They really only had three weeks or so to do all their elements in practice. Johnny had a groin injury last year that has since healed. And we found out earlier that today their grandfather was taken to the hospital due to a seizure. physically for this young pair. She's also been battling uh, bronchitis and pneumonia, so she's on antibiotics. She is not feeling up to herself. Now they're very close, the brother and sister team. They've been skating and competing together since they were five and seven years of age. That's, a, that's very early. Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler, their effort here in the short program. The throw triple loop jump. She just doesn't get the left leg back to stop the rotation and a hard fall right there. Hey, watch out next year. Watch now on the left of your screen, Arena Rodina, one of their coaches. All she did was win 10 world titles and three yeah, Olympic gold so medals. That's all. First set of marks now for the Stinglers. 3.8 or 4.8. And that bandage definitely reflecting the injury. Hard to take the impact coming out of those big throws and jumps on the right knee. These marks quite low for them. 4.0 down to 3.8. Yeah. Second set now, 4.8 up to 5.5, so those a little bit higher, but the Stieglers in sixth place overall. Bows hugging Steve Hartzell. Of course, he had the fractured skull last year, nearly died, and it's great to see him back watching figure skating here at the Fleet Center. Danielle and Steve still have the lead here in the Paris Short program, followed by Scott and Dulapon, and then the former partner of Paul Binnabos, Laura Handy, along with Jonathan Hunt. Remember, this one-third of the overall Sima score Ganaba leading up Ganaba. to the championship free skate over on ABC Sports Saturday evening. Taking the ice right now, the brother-sister team of Seema and Amir Ganaba. And her all of 4'8", <laughs> at 14 years old, but she is a spitfire. Second at the Junior National Championships last season. <laughs> And this number was choreographed by Peter Opegaard. And a lot of the choreography came from Seema. So she's very creative. They're skating to the music The Storm by Vanessa May. And they have been getting great height on this move, the split double twist lift. He's 5'11". So that just shows how much taller he is. Go ahead, do the math very quickly. Yeah, really. Go ahead. 
but what I mean is he can really throw her up into the air. Zena, freshman in high school this year, four years younger than her brother. And now they go for their side-by-side -side triple toe loop. They pulled them off, a little squeaky on the landing. Remember that within the short program, you can do a throw double or a throw triple, so they will not receive a deduction for that. They skate with a lot of flair and sharpness, and they really accent this music so well. Those spins weren't together, but at the end, they managed to get them together, and that's through hours of practice. When you lift the lady like that, it's, she takes on the characteristics of a sail going through the air, and there's actually drag, so you have to compensate for that and make sure you keep your partner right over your head. Not let look, her drift away. Look at Seema. She is just loving performing this number. She really gets into the choreography. making quite a statement. Yes, she is. Their first trip to the Senior National Championships. They told us earlier that she started skating when she was 18 months. <laughs> and he was four. She wanted to be on the ice with her brother. I bet he could really throw her back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Side-by-side, <laughs> -side, triple toe loops. Right here, they go up into the air. Three rotations. And you're looking to see if there's a two-foot landing. Just a little bit cheated. That means she didn't get around three times, but still, well done. And then this is the throw, double sow cow. No deduction, plenty of height though. Three feet in the air, perpendicular to the ice, nice landing. Two, four point five. One of their coaches, Roger two, Bass, who four, coaches four, them five, along with John Nix, he's alongside four, the first set, the crowd didn't like these at all. Three point nine, the low mark. We're seeing a very <laughs> wide range of marks six, here. Well, the throw but triple, or three, throw double sow cow five, wasn't as difficult eight, as the throw triple, five, so that one, may five, be an element eight, that they've five, marked down. And four point seven. Maybe a time deduction, too, in terms of, of going over the allotted time, two minutes and 40 seconds. Presentation marks a wide range there. So the Ganabas in ninth place overall. Welcome U.S. Now, champions Yoko taking Ina the ice. And John Zimmerman. Yoko Ina and John Zimmerman, well known not only in American figure skating circles, but also on the international stage. They went on to play seventh at last season's World Championships in Nice. And would like to win their second straight U.S. title. They are certainly the team to watch here in Boston. And they're skating to last year's program, to the Truman Show. And I think this choice of music really accentuates their style and their strength. And one thing that Tamara Mosvina, their coach, has given them is a wonderful extension within their skating. Here, the side-by-side -side triple toe loop. And John flipping forward there, not what he wanted, not as bad as a fall, but not a smooth landing. Nice split, double twist, absolute split, and good split. 
And that's important, Peggy, to really attain that split before the two rotations. Now their throw, triple style cow. Watch his back inside edge take off. Oh, man. Right. Oh. Pitching forward with the upper body, causing all of the motion to go down toward the ice instead of across the ice. of a disaster for them having these two major major faults in this program but i do see a tremendous improvement in their unison and their strength and their overall carriage of their skating over the ice it's much improved where they've really improved their combination spin, pulling apart, then pulling in, and then this final position. In truth, Tamara Mosvina style, a great way to end the program. Oh, absolutely. But very disappointing for them. And Peggy, you mentioned earlier the bronze medal at Trophy La Ligue during the Grand Prix Series. There's a general feeling that they had turned the corner with that bronze medal. And there's Tamara Moscovina, the legendary Russian coach who has coach them they are now in their third season together but that's a disappointing short program not what Ina and Zimmerman were looking for at all well let's open the door and here is a look at that triple toe loop that um, John missed in the beginning he gets up in the air but his feet are crossed and he doesn't uncross them soon enough to have a nice clean landing and that was a very rough beginning and it wasn't over. And here they went into their throw, triple sow cow, good height in the air. Oh. But she just maybe got up a little too high and really anticipated that landing a little too soon and uh, just couldn't hold on. It's important to note that last year when Ina and Zimmerman won their national championship, the Hartzels were out because of the knee injury the that Danielle suffered. So the 99 champs going against the 2,000 champs. And now the first set of marks, 4.9, the whole mark up to 5.4. The marks indicating these mistakes, the focus not there. Now they have to suffer with these low marks. Lack of concentration, maybe, Penny, focus? I think so. I mean, they're just starting to be at that world level. It takes a lot more. Second set now for presentation. 5.3 to 5.8. They're still alive. Don't forget, if you're in the top three going into the free state, you control your own destiny. Ina and Zimmerman now in second behind the Hartzels. And there's a happy team right there. Steve Hartzell, you hit your head on the ice hard. You get 12 stitches after practice. No problem. You come back strong with your sister, Danielle, to take the lead after the pair's short program. A check of the standings, the Hartzells ahead of Ina and Zimmerman, the 2000 champs, and then Scott and Dulabon, the silver medalist last year in Cleveland. They round out the top three ahead of Handy and Hunt. The Stieglers in seventh right now. The bronze medalist from last season, Spielberg and Joe Wright in ninth, ahead of the Ganamas. The crowd loved them. They are in 11th right now. The team in second place, Ina and Zimmerman, downstairs with Susie Wynn right now. Susie? Thanks, Terry. Kyoko and John, as the season's progressed, you've really shown a lot of improvement. But here in the short, you made some mistakes. What happened? I don't know what we happened out here tonight. You know, we've been skating really well. And the last few events that we've competed in, the short's been going great. So, you know, it's disappointing for us that we didn't get a chance to show everyone here that, you know, that we've been skating well. So hopefully in the long, it'll go much better. Now, going into the long, you're in second place. What are you going to do to push your strategy to get back on track? Well, we're going to take it one element at a time, you know, and we're just going to 
uh, do what we know we can do in practice, and we can really uh, skate well and good programs, you know, so we're going to take one element at a time and do well. Well, good luck to both of you. Terry, back to you. Is Michael Weiss ready to win his third consecutive U.S. championship? A stress fracture in his left foot forced him off the ice earlier this season. The skating world wonders now if he's ready to defend his title and become the first three-time U.S. champion since Brian Boitano in 1988. Is Timothy Gable ready to win his first U.S. title? Third in 99, second last year, Gable's elevation on the ice mirrors his climb up the podium. Last year, his three quads made history. And is Todd Eldridge ready to win his sixth U.S. title? The Massachusetts native took the last two years off to rest his body. Now, he takes his first steps towards his ultimate goal, the 2002 Olympics. He won his first U.S. title more than 11 years ago. Paul Revere was ready for a British invasion. Tonight, American men invade the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Well, if Paul Revere would arrive through this city tonight, he would need an extra overcoat. Chilly night in Boston as the MTA crosses the Charles River, running right past what was once the Boston Garden. They call it the T to the locals here in Boston. As we welcome you to the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Along with Peter Carruthers, I'm Terry Gannon. Leslie Goodell joins us in just a little bit. Tonight, the men's short program gets underway. And Peter, as always, there are eight required elements. And something to look forward to is the jump combination. Actually, Tim Gable has a quad land with his combination, so that'll be very exciting. So this Fleet Center crowd getting ready to watch what should be a terrific men's competition and getting it underway is Matt Savoy, the 2000 World Junior Bronze Medalist. Skating to passion and power, Matt has been one of the more consistent men this season. He won two bronze medals on the Grand Prix so far. He doesn't have a quad plan, but he really skates within his limits. He'll open up with a triple axle. Oh! Really off in the air on that. Uncharacteristic of him. There's that four-tenths deduction. You got that about. right. the triple flip, triple toe loop, a little hesitant. <laughs> 20 years of age from Peoria, Illinois, and is just off the podium the last two years in fourth at the U.S. Nationals, but it's getting more crowded at the top now that Todd Eldridge is back. change camel you'll notice he'll change feet and do another camel and the men have to do six revolutions on each foot There he steps up into the triple lutz. Nice jump and good steps leading into it. Better than that. An 
unfortunate mistake. What a pretty consistent skater throughout the year. Matt Savoy trying for the first time to get up on the podium. You really have to get up over the ball of your foot and be perpendicular in the air. You can see right there his hips not straight over the axis, and then he starts to lean and has a big crash. Four tenths, like you mentioned, Terry, unfortunate. And that will be on the first mark. There's a look at the judges who will be looking for the mistakes here in the short program. Peter, what about the deductions? Well, remember, 6.0 is a perfect mark in figure skating. As far as required elements are concerned, on the first mark, you don't want to fall on a jump because you can take a four-tenths of a point deduction. Five point Tough zero, start from which to recover nine, for the junior at Bradley one, University, a poly sci major. First set of two required five element zero, marks. So basically what you can do, Terry, is take this first mark and add four tenths to each one of these scores. And that's what they would have been had he not made that mistake. Without the opening miss, right. Set the tone for his program, too. The second set for presentation, 5.2 up to 5.5. You can see how these marks are considerably higher. Not so reflecting this. Mistake. See how they... Terry Gannon back with you. The men beginning their run toward a national title. Michelle Kwan and the ladies will do the same at the top of the hour. Just switch over to ESPN2 to catch that and then tomorrow all the championships will be decided over on abc sports our coverage begins at four o'clock eastern time you know the last time the nationals were held here in boston was 1962 the last time that dick button was not working behind the microphone at the national championships 1960 unfortunately dick will not join us this week here in boston he's recovering from a fall that he suffered a couple of weeks ago but Dick, I know you're watching all of the action here in Boston, and get back out here very quickly. It's not the same without you. Right now, we turn our attention to the four-time U.S. champion, Peter Carruthers. You look at this men's event. It has a chance to be the best competition in years. Three of the top skaters in the world vying for not only the national title, but two spots that are available on the world championship yeah. team. Definitely. This is going to be a powerhouse event. Michael Weiss is defending U.S. champion. Last year, he capped off his season winning his second world bronze medal, but his season hasn't gone that well this year. He has battled a stress fracture in his left foot, but no signs of that here in Boston. He's skating much better, more consistent, and he's landing his quad. The man who was right behind Weiss at Nationals last year is Timothy Gable. He is an outstanding jumper, but he's made it very clear that he's been working on his artistry and his style. And then finally, the man who has more experience than any of these men is five-time U.S. champion Todd Eldridge. He has learned the quad. He has it planned in his short program and the free program. If he can do that with the great spins that he's known for, he could definitely find himself at the top of the standings. A very good field, Terry. Meanwhile, the men's short program continues with a young skater who has really created a lot of buzz the last couple of years as a youngster with enormous potential, excuse me, 16 years of age from Newark, Delaware. Here's Johnny Weir, last year fifth at the Junior National Championships, fourth the year before. Derek Delmore, by the way, who was just on the ice, received marks ranging from 3.7 up to 5.4 overall, and he's in second place right now. Very nice for him, considering what's happened with the rest of the competition, some of the mistakes that we've been seeing, the delivery on that jump combination. Oh, an unfortunate mistake there, a single axle, so he falls short of rotation. skating in a show on New Year's Eve. He had a couple of shots of cortisone to get ready and be able
give him the skate. Said he set a goal five years ago, competing in the senior nationals within five years, so he's here to fulfill that goal. position there and a very good position on the second spin great variation this is spectacular now if he can in the future bring these jumps up and match it with that great spinning there is a wonderful product on the ice listen to this crowd too Young guy's got a lot of energy. 16-year-old Johnny Weir. The key to this is getting up straight in the air as he does on this triple Lutz. Very nice. And then he backs it up with a triple toe loop. And there was no touchdown, so there's no deduction. Very nice combination. But I am so impressed with this. These traveling camels. And then look at the rate of speed in which he spins. The low position. Hard to get down that low. And then he backs it up and gets into a very tough position to keep spinning that fast because you're bending over. Very nice. He won the Eastern Sectionals to earn a trip to the Senior National Championships and heck of a performance here in the short program. Required element marks 4.6 up to 5.0. You know, it's, it's just disappointing that he had that mistake on the single axle. But I tell you, and this is indicative of what we can expect in the future look at these presentation marks much better very solid he's got to be very happy with a 5.5 excellent 4.9 up to 5.5 for johnny weir way and here is the man who has stood on the podium the last two seasons at the u.s championships trippin zivanovich last year the u.s bronze medalist and in 99 he captured the silver medal 25 years of age from los angeles The 
key is not to drop off at the end of this program. Triple Lutz and... Excellent. That's the best we've seen from Chippen Zivanovich this year. Gary Visconti is coach, always emotional. He's a two-time U.S. champion going into the Hall of Fame. This uh, weekend in Boston, what a performance. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, Chippen Zivanovich making a big statement in this men's short program. Solid. The triple flip, triple toe, he really vaults up into the air in the position that he needs to be in and backs it up with a great triple toe loop. That's what he wanted in the beginning of his program to give him the confidence. Follows through here with the triple axle. No doubt that that is a clean landing. No mistakes. It's a great expression. By well, anyone wanting to write off Trippin Zamanovich at this point, not so fast, my friend. Here's the first set, 5.4 to 5.6. No, you're absolutely right. He has skated so well. A high of 5.6. And these presentation marks should get better because really put a good performance out of that ice. There they are, 5-5 five, five, up to 5.7. Triple oh. Zivanovich into the lead at this point, trying to play the spoiler role. But up next, it's Todd Eldridge, the native... ...club in Bluefield Hills, Michigan. Let's have a warm welcome now for Todd Eldridge. Terry Gannon, Peter Carruthers, Leslie Goodell here at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships in Boston. And here is 29-year-old Todd Eldridge. He's been away from the Nationals the past two years. This is his 11th trip to the Senior National Championships. Ultimately, he wants to win a medal at the Olympic Games. And just as you were speaking, he was warming up that free turn that he's going to have before he does his big quad. It will be the first element in the program. He won his first title back in 1990. there. Remember, the short program is all about the required elements. And what you want to do is get into the top three going into the free skate. Then, if you win that free skate, you're the overall winner. Right now, Trippin Zivanovich in the lead. He was right on with his required elements.
great ending, but a rough beginning. It's amazing what pressure and competition will do to you. He was, did the quad so easily in the warm-up and then popped it as the first jump and struggled to come back after that. I called this a single, but actually it was a double. But a real interruption in the rotation. He was tilted in the air, that foot kicking up off his center. Big mistake. Now, how much will that hurt him? First set of marks. This is where it would show up. Required elements up to 5.6. Yes, uh, with the mistake that has happened in this short program, and looking at what has happened to Trippin Zavonovich before this, I'm shocked to see such high scores. Actually, on the presentation, pretty high scores on the first mark for required element. A couple of five sevens, the rest five eights for presentation. You're surprised at the required element marks? Yes, absolutely. Todd Eldridge into the lead right now over Trippin Zivanovic. When we come back, there's a top three. Remember, though, Weiss and Gable still to come. But here is the 17-year-old who won the U.S. Junior Championship in 99, Ryan Bradley from St. Joseph, Missouri. He's had some problems recently, too. He's battled the flu, was off the ice for a week, and he's got a serious knee injury. The doctors actually wanted him to put a cast on it, but he wanted to skate. when he's skating. Opening up with the triple axel. Oh! That is what we call a waxel when you're not on the right part of the blade and you try to throw yourself into the air. No chance to create rotation. Didn't look like he was focused going in. No, he though. kind of just relaxed his arms and he didn't prepare properly for that. Seventh grader, now being homeschooled because of all the time he spends on the ice practicing. He started skating when he was two years old. He said he was learning to skate as he was learning to walk. He's gonna try to get it back here with his jump combination, the triple flip, and then the triple toe loop. More focused on that. wasn't really himself, was he? Oh, no, certainly not at the beginning of the program. That strange opening jump. So Ryan Bradley, a bit of a struggle in the short program. We've seen him much better than that. You saw the look on his face. He knows it. More to come from Boston in a moment. Thanks, Terry. Todd, you landed the quad twice during warm-up. Struggled with it a little bit during your program. What happened there? Well, when I went into it in the program, uh, you know, I, I felt really good and, and just, uh, you know, I think because of doing two good ones in the warm-up, you know, I gave it a little bit extra and rushed it a little bit and, uh, you know, when you do that and, you know, a tough jump like that, it only takes a little bit to throw it off. How important is it going to be for you to land the quad in the free skate program in order for you to come out on top in this one? 
Well, I think it, it really depends, obviously, on the draw and, and uh, you know, how the other guys skate. If they skate before me and they miss theirs, um, you know, then I'll probably still do it anyway, but, uh, you know, just because it's been going so well and, and uh, you know, it's, it's tough not to, you know, and, and it's always been in the program for the last year or so. So, uh, you know, I think uh, my mental approach is going to be the same. Thanks, Todd. Good luck. Terry, back to you. Leslie, thanks, and remember there are only two spots available for that world championship team. Right now, Todd has the lead over Trippin Zivanovic and Matt Savoy as Ryan Yonke steps out onto the ice. The 22-year-old from Gross Point Farms, Michigan, his fourth year at the Senior Nationals. He was a fifth-place finisher last year in Cleveland. By the way, the marks for Ryan Bradley range from 4.4 up to 5.2 overall, and he is currently in fifth place. pushing the envelope as far as rotation with jumps and your body really does take a pounding when you're landing these jumps and the position in which you land the jumps has a lot to do with how much impact the body takes he's got a nice style to his skating, a very relaxed, controlled look on the ice. Very comfortable. Fifth last year, would love to move up from that. 22-year-old Ryan Yonke is Timothy Gable, the only man in the world who has done three quads in one program. He did it last year at the national championships, among other times, too. But he came in second right behind Michael Weiss last season. He wants the gold this year. planned as the first element. Here is the quadruple toe. Sal Cow. Double toe loop. Very solid. He has been nearly perfect with his quad jumps this season in major competitions. 
Now eight for the season here, the triple axle. Oh, what an unusual mistake there. A break in concentration. jumps it's the landing where the problems are creeping in so all the talk about timothy gable improving his artistry over the past year and right now it's the jumps that are giving him problems he has had an injury strained his mcl and his right knee was off the ice and for about a week and a half just got back on last thursday the funny thing about timothy gable is once he's airborne, usually he's okay with the jumps, but problems on the landing. Not his best, not a bad fall within the program but not full commitment to landing the jump with a continuous edge coming out that is what was unusual about the landing well you never know it's getting interesting todd eldridge was certainly not perfect he missed his quad to open up his short program but he does have the lead right now we'll see what the judges do with timothy gable Forward takeoff, triple axle, gets up in the air, fine, but look at the step out. He touches down, turns forward, a break in concentration. Now the quadruple sow cow. The key to this is getting up into the air, generating the rotation, but if you don't stop that rotation and have a good check, you can have trouble, but there, no problem. Frank Carroll, his coach. He also coaches Michelle Kwan, of course. All right, let's see what the judges do here. The first set for required elements, 5.3 up to 5.7. Taking that deduction on the first mark, but I will say for Timothy Gable, I do think his style and presentation is coming along. It's improving. And now the presentation marks, that's where Todd Eldridge got the edge over Trippin Zivanovic. The second set, same range. 5-3 up to 5.7. But enough to put Timothy Gable over Trippin Zivanovic. He is in second, right behind Eld Eldridge at this point. Michael Weiss, the 24-year-old and father of two from Fairfax, Virginia. The last two seasons, the world bronze medalist. He knows he's got his work cut out for him. Remember, though, two spots in the world team, but going into the free skate, your only goal is to be in that top three and control your own destiny. There's a huge opportunity for him. Skating to the view. Skating to the music, Taurus Bulba. Quadruple toe, double toe loop. Slight two foot landing on that. But just a very slight touchdown. Awfully close, yeah. But compared to where he has been this season, much better. And look at the air on that triple axle, huge. with a stress fracture in his left ankle. This season, the stress fracture in his left foot. Actually, the third toe on that foot. Tried to come back too early at the Cup of Russia. But really nice step. 
steps leading into that triple lutz. So, the look of determination on the face of Michael Weiss. All the problems with the injuries. There's his wife, Lisa, also one of his choreographers. But a smile on his face. We saw him struggle so much trying to come back from the injury. He got himself in shape. Best performance of the year in a short program from Michael Weiss. Back with He seems to save his best for the national championships, and Michael Weiss... Well, what a great performance in the short program. Now he waits for the marks from the judges. Here's the quadruple toe loop. He gets up into the air nicely. Fast rotation, but a two-foot landing. You can see the left foot, the toe pick, going in right there. Not a huge error, but there, a good double toe loop. Awesome combination. This is the ESPN strobe motion. You can't count rotation, but what you can see is the air position that you must have to complete four rotations. What I find so interesting is look the way he's looking into the direction of the rotation. Arms in tight, legs in tight, and then of course the landing. Audrey Wiziger is longtime coach on the right side of your screen there, and now the first set, the required elements, 5.5 up to 5.9. Some judges catching the little two-foot landing, and certainly not in the case of the 5.9, but the presentation marks, Terry, should be very good because he really had good choreography, he had wonderful musicality, and wonderful utilization of the ice. Double of five eights, but the rest, 5.9s across the board. Michael Weiss, all first place votes. The Ordinals all say number one for Michael Weiss after the short program. Hasn't been an easy road, and there have been plenty of critics who have doubted him along the way, but Michael Weiss just where he wants to be right now, ahead of Todd Eldridge and Timothy Gable. That's your top three, Trippin Zivanovich in fourth. The leader, Michael Weiss, has joined Leslie Goodell. Leslie? Thanks, Terry. Michael, a spectacular performance by you, one you have to be very pleased with, especially considering the season that you've had so far. Ups and downs, physically, you've suffered through, through, through some injuries. How do you feel physically right now? Uh, I feel really good. Um, you know, I've come off a, a real strong uh, month or so of training, which, you know, was crucial considering the early part of the year I was injured and, and wasn't able to train. United States Championships in the past five years and is the reigning world champion. Michelle Kwan begins defense of her U.S. crown tonight. Last year, Michelle's consistency wavered in the short program, but she prevailed in the free skate to win her third consecutive title. Those challenging include 15-year-old Sarah Hughes. She won her first medal at last year's national. After completing the only triple-triple combination in the event, her artistry on the ice is catching up fast with her powerful athleticism. One year ago, Jenny Kirk made her senior national debut. Now, the 16-year-old is a contender for the podium. The former ballerina takes the ice in her home state. Austin was home to an American revolution more than 230 years ago. Will there be a coup in American ladies skating? The 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships continue tonight.
city of Boston has been an extremely gracious host this week for the most important annual event in American skating. The fans have made their way through downtown Boston to the Fleet Center as we welcome you to our continuing coverage of the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Along with Peggy Fleming, Peter Carruthers, and Leslie Goodell, I'm Terry Gannon. Michelle Kwan and the ladies about to get their short program underway here. And Peggy, as always, there are eight required elements. Well, the footwork here into the triple jump, this is where they can gain or lose significant points depending on the difficulty of the element that they choose. So we're set to go here. And on the ice first, the 20-year-old from Baytown, Texas. What a great national championship she had last season. She jumped from 16th and 99 to 5th last year. Andrea Gardner. And she said that that nationals was the best moment in her life. She had a standing ovation at that championship. A short program for the ladies. Two minutes, 40 seconds in length and worth one-third of the overall score. her triple lutz double toe combination and watch her free leg as she swings it up in the air unusual and technique sometimes it works for her and sometimes it doesn't it's how she learned it and it's really hard to unlearn a habit like it's that similar to what tara lipinski used to do yes and the two have actually trained in the same area sugarland texas We first took notice of her back in 97 when she won the junior national championship, the first African-American lady to win that title. She had trouble with the first jump combination, the triple lutz, this the triple flip. Oh, very nice. disappointment uh the first jump but peggy you're absolutely right that free leg causing hey, a problem Peter, before uh, Peter, who is this huh? oh, i wouldn't know <laughs> i think that looks like your sister <laughs> kitty carruthers of course kitty and peter the olympic silver medalist but andrea gardner what a talented young woman an accomplished violinist she's won several statewide competitions wants to be a heart surgeon one day what she's going to want to work on in the future is keeping this right leg, the foot that she vaults off of, closer to the ice. That is not a good position to be in before you have to vault into the air. And that causes the lean and then the fall. The leg closer to the ice on the takeoff would be more conducive to a good jump. And there's the panel of nine judges. And in this short program, Peggy, they are looking for mistakes and looking to make deductions what about those deductions well just for example if, if a skater falls on a jump it's a minimum deduction of a point three so they uh they have to make this decision so fast it's incredible that they can do this so quickly 4.7 4.7 and they do not have 
have the benefit of instant replay here at the national championship. Sometimes we see that, the world championships and such. First set of marks for required elements, 4.5 to 4.8. Remember the eight required elements, and those marks reflect whether or not the skater performed all eight of those. Now the second set for overall artistry, it is for presentation, 5.1 up to 5.3. So Andrea, Terry Gannon back with you. Hopefully you were with us over the past hour over on ESPN to see Michael Weiss take the lead in the men's short program. Don't forget, tomorrow, all the championships to be decided over on ABC Sports. Our coverage begins at 4 o'clock Eastern. Now, in terms of the ladies here in Boston, there's been an extremely high attrition rate. Injuries all over the place. Some of the young skaters scheduled to compete but not able to. Sasha Cohen out with a fracture in one of her vertebrae. Naomi Nari Nam, the sensation two years ago at National, she's out because of a hip injury. And Deanna Stellato, a young skater on the rise, also out because of an injured hip. And Peggy, what's going on here? What do you make of all these injuries? Well, Terry, this Nationals has become as remarkable for who is skating as well as for who is not skating. It seems the rules only change when our sport gets pushed up against the wall. You know, before he died in 1997, my coach Carlo Fossi was on a mission to limit triple jumps even more in the ladies' free skate. I think it's time. It's also time for our equipment to catch up with our sport. You know, the boots and blades of figure skating essentially haven't changed in 50 years. What other sport can you think of whose equipment hasn't evolved in decades? We're way past due for some changes, and unfortunately, this time it's taken a toll on some very young mm. bodies. Yeah, hopefully some of those changes will come to pass over the next couple of years. Peter, what about the skaters who are here? You've got to start with one. We've done this for the past several years, Michelle Kwan. Well, Michelle Kwan has not been below second in any major competition that she's entered since 1995. I think we tend to hold Michelle to such a high standard that when she does slip or make a mistake that you think, uh-oh, she might be going backwards. Not here at Nationals. She's right on track, peaking at just the right time for this championship. Then there's 15-year-old Sarah Hughes, who came in here last year with a lot of potential, but this year she's come here to win a championship. She backs up her skating with great technical content and a lot more artistry this year, what every skater wants. Well, as we said, Sasha Cohen did come to Boston hoping to perhaps win a gold medal. She's not competing, but she is still here, and right now she joins our Leslie Goodell. Leslie? Thank you, Terry. Sasha, you withdrew from Nationals earlier in the week. What was the determining factor for you to make your decision to withdraw? Well, I was having an increasing amount of pain, and it was getting, you know, worse, so I decided that it would be best for my back to let it heal and not... You break it. What's your plan now in, in terms of recovery, in terms of competition? What's the next step? Well, the first step is to heal and then after that, slowly come back onto the ice, get back on my jumps, and then try to train programs for next year. An increasing number of jumps in the ladies' programs these days. Your injury wasn't entirely because of jumping, but do you feel maybe increased pressure to increase your number of jumps? Do you think maybe it's going too far? No, I don't think that it was necessarily because of the jumping. I think that jumping made it worse, but, um, you know, skating has progressed since it started, and it will continue to do so. So to be competitive, you just have to keep putting out those jumps. Thanks. Best of luck in your healing process. You. Terry, back to you. Hi, Leslie. Thank you. How about you guys? Does Sasha Cohn look about 10 years older than she did last year? <laughs> oh, she, she sure did. She looked great. Won the silver medal. Well, love to see her back on the ice soon. And healthy. Here is 15-year-old Sarah Wheat, though, and she won the junior national title back in 99. And Sarah says her biggest challenge at nationals will be keeping herself calm. <laughs> Opening with a nice flying camel. Good arm position. The ladies must do at least eight revolutions on the spin. A lot of energy. The music is Sing 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 by Benny Goodman. Now her triple up, double toe. Very nicely done. Nice 
double axle. She's really got a lovely, entertaining quality about she her does. skating. Championships. She placed 10th. And unless your performance at Nationals guarantees you a spot in the next year's Nationals, you've got to compete in tournaments, if you will, around the country in your home area. And she came in second at the Eastern Sectionals to get here. And now this final jump is footwork into a triple flip. Oh! oh. And that's, Whoa. oh my goodness, difficult because you have to do But she went step. for it. <laughs> yes, she, she did. did. Anyway. She did it double. <laughs> Give her credit. But that's what makes it difficult is doing that footwork before you do a difficult jump like a triple flip or any of the triples. Too bad. How much do you think that'll hurt her? A very bizarre situation in terms of deductions. Uh, we're actually trying to figure that out right now. Well, she just she... fell on the footwork. And here is a look at the footwork she was doing right before her triple flip. And we thought, well, she caught herself. But then she, she went down. And it's oh unfortunate. God. Poor girl. And it is a deduction of a point three. But then she got right up. She is so determined and did a double flip. And that will not be a deduction. It just is not as difficult a jump. Good save, though. 4.5. Four four uh, is too bad. You know what she was just told three. as she came off four the ice, though? Four. You didn't four panic. You went six. ahead and did the four jump, and that's four. exactly four right. The nine. first set of marks four now, there they are. 4.7. Unfortunate to have those big stumbles four. took out such a big part of her program. Four. 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 And but the good three. part is that she could four. laugh four. at herself, four. Yeah. Second set for presentation, 4.3 up to 5.1 for Sarah Wheat. She is right behind Andrea Gardner right now. The ladies' short program continues. Terry Gannon, Peggy Fleming, Peter Carruthers, and Leslie Goodell with you here in Boston as Angela Nikodinov takes the ice. The 20-year-old from San Pedro, California, and the 99 U.S. bronze medalist. Last year, she placed fourth, but hoping to make the podium and perhaps the world championship team this weekend. And she's skating to Just For You by Giovanni. This is a beautiful program for Angela, and I just hope she can overcome her inconsistencies that she's had in the past. The most difficult element in the program will be the first. It is the triple lutz, double toe loop. over this past year and I think she really loves skating again. I think there are a lot of people rooting for her because she has worked so hard to get in the best shape of her career. She switched coaches from Richard Callahan in Detroit back to Elena Cherkaskaya out in Lake Arrowhead, California. Nice triple flip. This is what she needs. We saw her improve a lot at Cup of Russia on the Grand Prix, and she's just keeping it going here. And this is where she's made her biggest improvement, is her elegance on the ice and feeling the music.
little shaky on the landing, but she has hung on to it. And this is a very pretty footwork section. And very difficult because the arms are swinging and she's keeping the flow going over the ice and covering the entire surface. This layback spin, probably one of the best layback spins of anyone. Oh, I'm so proud of her. That is wonderful. Good for her. She has skated a perfect program and really set the bar here in this ladies' competition. Hard to get much better than that, and we perhaps have never seen Angela Nicodino skate better than that. Yeah. This was her opening jump, this triple lutz double toe. Watch her reach back for this takeoff, and up she goes, very straight, nice lift in the air, and good speed in between the jumps into that double toe. Very solid beginning. And here is a look at her double axle, which she had some problems on this landing, a very shaky, kind of went up on her toe a bit, and but she saved it. And this was such a nice gift for her to do this kind of a performance here at Nationals. Good for her. Five points. You see Angela emotional now in the kiss and cry area because it's been such a long, tough struggle for her. The first set of marks now, 5.4 to 5.7. All very consistent marks. Maybe a little bit low on the 5.4, but she's got to be pleased. Solid. And now the second set for presentation, and those are even higher. And I think a lot of it is due to the lady sitting next to her, Elena Churchivskaya. She's not only her choreographer, but a real good friend. Yep, it's been a great influence. On behalf of the all-year figure skating club in Culver City, California, a warm welcome, please, for Amber Corwin. There have been good crowds all week here in Boston to watch the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships and knowledgeable ones, too. A lot of history here. Here is 22-year-old Amber Corwin. And she has a very ambitious short program plan. She is doing a triple-triple as her combination jump. The key to the triple-triple combination is the timing. You have to complete the first triple, stop the rotation, and then kick in for the second one. Here's the first. She nice. gets such nice height and good distance on these jumps. That's what makes them so special. Amber's been on the scene for some time, and she's had a successful career. She placed fifth at the Nationals in 97, placed sixth three other times, but not a good experience last year when she finished 13th in Cleveland. Now her triple lutz. Very solid. She's very happy about that. A lot of expression.
little jump, this double axle. Nice, a little squeaky on that landing. Kind of landed on the inside edge instead of the outside edge. Good for her. Like Angela Nikodinov, she really kept her timing. The pacing was there. No nerves in that performance. No. Yeah, very good performance for the junior from Cal State Long Beach, the 22-year-old from Hermosa Beach, California, Amber Corwin. What she does so well here is she keeps a nice flow across the ice, stops the rotation, then gets up for the second jump and has a good one there. Very good. 5.3. Five Charlene Wong, one of her coaches. The other one is Scott Williams. Remember him? The 86 U.S. silver medalist. Here's the first set of marks. 5.3. These are good marks considering where we are in this competition so far. No deduction. Presentation marks now and those even higher. 5.3 to 5.6. So Amber Corwin into second place right now. Here is the favorite for the gold medal, and perhaps the most recognizable skater in the world, the four-time national champion, three-time world champion, Michelle Kwan. She's skating to East of Eden by Lee Holdridge. And it practices all week. She has just given me goosebumps with this number. improved layback spin for her and look at this unusual position very creative Peggy Fleming isn't the only one with chills in this building. Oh, she is just wonderful. Such confidence. Her ninth consecutive appearance at the Senior National Championship. She has medaled seven straight years. What a performance by Michelle Kwan here in the short program. With all the pressure that comes upon you in the short program, she is able to stay so musical and lyrical throughout her performance. Well, Marvelous. We'll have her marks in a moment. Is Michelle Kwan beatable, though? That's been the question all week. We posed that question. Michelle Kwan, along with her coach, Frank Carroll, who says, well, I see her as the greatest skater in the world. She may have just proven it again. She really has good flow going into this jump and coming out. The triple lutz double toe loop. Beautiful. Look at the arm position. Just lovely. And as Peggy mentioned, 
What makes this so hard is the position she attains at the end of this playback to keep it centered and spin so fast. Wonderful. She already has the record for the most 6.0. Perfect scores at the U.S. Nationals with 16. We'll see what happens here. The required element marks. Look at those. Well, she is so well deserved, these marks for her. And now present case of wow. Oh. Oh. Seven. She has done it again. <laughs> Seven perfect sixes. 5.9. Bringing her total of perfect sixes at the national championships to 23. What a career. My gosh. Competitor skates on behalf of the Skating Club of New York in New York City. A warm welcome, please, for Sarah Hughes. So this crowd just settling back in, but the ovation now for 15-year-old Sarah Hughes. How do you follow that performance? Well, if there's anyone who's going to take the ice and not be unnerved, it would be Sarah Hughes. This is actually a great test for Sarah to see how she handles this. by Rock Modernoff. Sarah says that the theme of her short program is discovering the ice for the first time. Her opening jump is this double axle. Nice height. Oh. Look at the control on that landing. Current U.S. bronze medalist. She went on to place at the World Championships last season. This will be her most difficult element, the triple lutz, and then followed up with the double toe loop. It's a beautiful position in this flying camel. Good stretch. Good speed. Now her footwork into this triple flip. Very solid. Really in her comfort zone. the best in the world throughout the season is really had a terrific season three medals in three events in the grand prix series which is the major series throughout the year well i think she's taken that experience and really grown from each one of those competitions she's entered she keeps getting better and better Ladies short program, one third of the overall score. The free skate tomorrow night over on ABC Sports beginning at 9 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. Gorgeous layback spin. Final combination spin. Well. <laughs> you want back-to-back -back performances? There you go. Yeah. And shows that she can take the heat. What a long way she has come in a year. Robin Wagner, her coach, who's been so instrumental throughout her career. Only 15 years of age. you got to remember that. I mean, you watch her skate and you just forget that. Mm -hmm. Sarah Hughes, along with her coach, Robin Wagner, waiting for the marks now here in the short program. She will mohawk she into this triple Sarah lutz Hughes jump. She does element. roll onto a inside edge that's supposed to take off of a backward seven. outside edge, edge but she skates out of it nicely now the first set of marks required five elements 5.6 five five up to 5.9 five five she had good and speed covering the ice and did these five jumps eight. very solid five and now presentation five marks five, five eight eights five and a five nine five so very good five Almost perfect. And Michelle Kwan had the seven six point oh's for presentation. So Sarah Hughes right behind Michelle in second place. 
It's Juan Hughes and then Angela Nikodinov who holds the third spot right now with attitude. The 16-year-old takes the ice. Jenny Kirk here at home. Well, her consistency has been so great this past season. That's one of her trademarks. She's skating to the music Evita by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Opening up with the triple lutz, double toe loop. There's the first jump, and the second. <laughs> what a fine ladies event this is. And what a career she's had already, even though she's only 16. She's the 2000 World Junior Champion in, in 99. She was the junior bronze medalist of the U.S. Now this footwork into the triple flip. of authority. from Newton, Massachusetts, not far from here. She spends the week, though, training on Cape Cod with Ebby and Mary Scottbold, former coaches of Paul Wiley and Nancy Kerrigan. Those are pretty good credentials. <laughs> not bad. Nice double <laughs> axle. event. Can you say three in a row? You Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, and now Jenny Kirk. 16 years of age and they're out of their seats here in the Fleet Center. We'll have her marks when we return to the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Champion. Back in Boston and Jenny Kirk just wowed the crowd after Michelle Kwan did the same and Sarah Hughes did the exact same thing. And here's a look at her triple lutz double toe. Very nice technique, good lift, and very solid, very nice tight turns in the air. The judges' mod score. Pretty good American team, huh? Yeah. You look at the ladies, good, yeah. perhaps at the World Championships. Five point three. Set of marks five now. Point five point three. Five up to five point six. Five point six. Five point five. five, five point she has six, done so five well five to see five point sixes. Very oh, solid for her. A little bit lower than and those of Angela Nikodinov, actually, who resides in third place right now. Now the presentation marks, Peter. 5.6. And again, five she's just going to improve upon this five mark to see five sixes five at this six. point in her career. Very good. And and I think that's a lot to do with her ballet training from yeah. early on. Right now, Jenny Kirk in fourth place behind Angela Nikodinov. So the top three remain the same. Quan, Hughes, and Nikodinov. Remember, there are three spots for the ladies open for the World Championship team. And here, the final skater in the ladies short program, Anne Patrice McDonough. Well, Anne Patrice really comes alive in performances. She has a real spark about her. Look at that nice low position on the sit spin. Hard to do. Keep it spinning that fast. Nice. She's the reigning junior national champion, by the way, only 15 years old. And now comes her combination, that triple lutz double toe, like all the other women have done. Oh. She just didn't get that spring up in the air to complete that. Leaning.
talking about the world championship team for the ladies and we've been referring to the senior level remember some of the skaters here trying to make the junior world championship team and in terms of this overall field don't forget it is so good but yet sasha cohen not able to skate naomi narinam not able to skate that's amazing yeah but you see such wonderful potential in Anne Patrice. And she's got a beautiful look on the ice. She covers the ice and carries herself so well. And footwork into this triple flip. <laughs> and she held on it for dear life. Yes. She's beautiful. Reigning junior national champion and Patrice McDonough closing things out here in the Ladies Short program in Boston. Welcome back to Boston and Patrice McDonough along with her coach Tom Zakrychik waiting for the marks. Very nice air on this getting up high but you can see the lean take place. She's not around not completing three not completing three rotations and falling at the end. The judges marks for Anne Patrice McDonough for required elements. Four point. You know, we talk about the depth of Russian ladies skating all the time. I'm not sure the U.S. takes a back seat at all these days. Oh, not at all. I mean, I think this is probably the, the strongest we've had in the ladies field in a long, long time. The first set, 4.6 to 5.1 for, for Anne Patrice. 5.3. And now the marks for presentation 5.1 up to 5.6 the range. 5.2, 5.3. So Anne Patrice McDonough currently in eighth place overall after the short program. But it's Michelle Kwan who is in the lead. All the pressure coming in. She has faced that for a number of years. She knows what that's like, but right now she's in a perfect spot. So Michelle is in the driver's seat heading into the free skate, but Sarah Hughes, Angela Nikodinov right behind, and Nikodinov's performance may be even more impressive because she skated early. The judges usually leave some room when an early skater takes the ice. But Michelle Kwan right now has been joined by Leslie Goodell. Leslie? Terry, already a record 16 perfect sixes at Nationals, seven more up to 23, and on an entirely new short program. Were you concerned at all that you'd be ready for this? No, I'm very familiar with the program. I've skated to it before um, it, as an exhibition program and just shortened it as a short. The music's very inspiring and it's a lot of fun and I just skate from the heart and felt really, really good out there. Can you remember a time when the competition was this deep? It's always deep. Um, I, I've heard all the skaters skate really well, so I know I just have to stay on top of my game and do what I can do. Last year you had to come from behind in the free skate now you're going in in the driver's seat. More comforting that way? It's always more comforting that way. Uh, well, knowing that you can do it, and um, I'm very confident this year. So just tomorrow's another game, and go out there and have fun. Thanks, Michelle. Good luck. Terry, back to you.